boys, I have to tell you the saddest story of all. I recorded a, a really great, a nice, delightful video for you, and then I realized my interface was turned off and no audio was picked up from the entire video. It was nice and long, very funny, classic information, top not. Number one quality, top one quality. And I um, uh, just didn't have any audio, so here we are. This happened uh, two days ago and I got mad and then didn't record anything and then now here we are. Here we are. Hope you guys are doing great, though. The sponsor of this video is myself. No one's sponsoring it. But if you know anyone who wants to sponsor a video, hit me up, boys. I would uh, I would love to advertise for you. Anyways, uh, check out this clip from my last Twitch stream. And uh, tell me you don't want to be hanging out on streams after you see this. So I have to be fair to the person. Whoa, what the- Minerva shards! Wow. Incredible. Oh! What? <laughs> Yo, what? <laughs> I just, every time I see that, I almost get like irritated with myself because I can't believe it happened, you know? And then I'm just like, wait a second, this is me. So guys, if you're not hanging out on the streams, you're missing out. They're a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, make sure uh, if you are though, if you want to see the streams, uh, if you download the Twitch app, you can turn on notifications. That way it'll give you a simple notification. It'll say, hey, Combs is live. Uh, come on and join in if you're interested in that you know whatever i'm not like Bleh. like if you want to be there it's a lot of fun i love hanging out with you guys on there i usually stream at least once a week but uh trying to do it twice so thank you guys for supporting in that way and if not let's just get into the video so a lot of people are just unlocking invisible woman because it's her second time around so i wanted to talk about invisible woman's like best teams uses how she works in each mode and what's great about her kit and basically, I think she's one of the best characters in the game. She can fit into a lot of different teams. She does a lot of good stuff. She's great in raids and like long, like kind of grindy content. Kind of like Fear the Darkness or Enter the Darkness. Enter the Darkness will be a bit harder since you need six star, especially if you're a newer player. But Fear the Darkness, she's very good in as well. So we're going to just go over a couple of teams that she's really solid in. And so you can look at this. And I'll tell you just right away, just so you know, because people are going to ask. Uh, she is level 72. Uh, I don't see any point of going beyond that right now, maybe in the future, but right now 72 is where she's at. So essentially, I mean, we all know, or at least you should know, if you're watching this video, I figure you know, I mean, she's unlocked with Sinister 6, and uh, they're pretty relatively easy farm these days, which I appreciate that they're pretty easy to farm to get a good character. I was a little short on Mysterio and Shocker for getting her to seven star. Unfortunately, Mysterio, I am just barely done with. I need like 50 more, but Shocker, I still need about 120. So out of luck there, but I'll get her to seven star next time. I obviously like her. I have her at tier 13. I wish that I had more red stars. I'd buy them in the store if I could find them. But we've got these T4s. I've got a lot of T4s on her. They're not all exactly necessary, but I like them. I think that they help. They make her better. And uh, pretty much she is just so good because of these two abilities. So this ability here, the T4s are very important for this ability. Uh, we'll talk about it in a second. So basically clears two negative effects from herself and all allies, gives everybody stealth, gives everybody defense up. And then whoever has the most health, she like takes the stealth away from. And so it's like a forced taunt almost. Basically the best part about this is the uh, clearing the debuffs and the defense up and then like again the pseudo taunt now if you don't have it on here it doesn't apply to all on the t4s if you don't have it on there it does not basically it doesn't do a pseudo taunt because it keeps the two highest health people and that just kind of makes it a little messy it's not as good uh again it can cleanse and still give the defense up pretty well but i would have to admit that putting the t4s on this has been incredible and it makes it a really good ability because again it just puts a taunt out on who just ever has the most health at the time now the way that this works is that it's whoever has the most health right now it's not going to be the highest health pool it's not going to be whatever whatever at least that's the way it's supposed to work but i actually don't know if it works that way because oftentimes if you run her with ultron it ends up de-stealthing an ultron minion I don't really understand that, to be honest with you. Um, I actually, now that I'm talking about this, realize I have no idea how this ability is supposed to work. But I can just tell you 
that it usually works out well if there's no minions on the board, if that makes sense. I think minions being on the board glitches it out. If you guys have had this experience, I would love to hear about it. I have it all this time when I run her with Ultron in Ultima 7, but you know, it's whatever. It's not the end of the world. It still really works because then they just all target a minion. So if they have any big attacks, they just blast a minion and then you can resummon minions anytime you want to. So this ability, this is her ultimate. It's not necessarily, I don't know if you guys are going to say that the T4s are worth it on this one. I like the T4s on this one. So the T4s on this one, what they do is they make it so the offense down lasts for two turns and then it gives an extra 10% barrier. So without the T4s, you have apply offense down for one turn to all enemies, barrier all allies for 30% of this character's max health. To me, having the offense down for the two turns and the extra 10% barrier is just worth it. The barrier is outstanding, okay? The barrier is amazing. It's really just a game changer because you can put them in, in like on U7 or Fear the Darkness, and it's like you really don't have to worry as much. It's not as risky of being one-shotted. You're not going to be one-shotted at least. So I found that to be very valuable. Again, that's my opinion. Maybe you guys disagree. I would love to know what you think, though. This is a really good that ability because on her basic... Uh, she attacks primary target for 250% damage, so it's basically like her basic, but then she barriers herself for 5% of this character's max health. So I would like to do the T4s on this one as well, because then it makes it so that she would gain an additional 5% of her max health as a barrier, so she would get 10% every time she counterattacked. So if she was able to get 10%, right, that's pretty crazy. So 10% of 120,000, but also you have the additional 20%, which is going to be 12, 24. So she'll be at around 146, 147,000. So 10% of that is going to be 14,000. So every time that she would attack or counterattack, she's going to gain an additional 14,000 barrier. So to me, that's pretty crazy to have. And so I do want to put the T4s on that one. I just have not yet. To me, that's really crazy, right? So that would be really crazy. So that's just obviously the simple overview of her kit. Let me show you a few teams that she's pretty good with. So I have three teams that I like her with. And uh, this first one is the obvious Fantastic Four, but with Thanos instead of Namor. Now, Namor is good in war only. He's not good outside of war actually at all. So for me, I have not powered up my Namor at all. And I just use Thanos because I think Thanos is great. He gives energy. And so then that way you can move him around. But I personally like him there best because a lot of times he gives just the energy to Invisible Woman. Sometimes if, if it's like a long or drawn out battle, it's nice to have a good Human Torch because he's able to use his ability that gives the offense up and calls assists more and uh that's really good i really like that and it's a strong ability if not it goes to invisible woman and she can give more barriers more stealth more clearing more defense up and it seems very valuable it, it may be better honestly to just put thanos on the edge here and then put invisible woman here and then put johnny in the middle but you know, to me, I've never had issues really beating anybody with this team. So while the first team is primarily a Blitz team or an Alliance War team, this team is a primarily Raid team. So this works way, way good in Raids. Is that a, is that a phrase? Is that English? Way good? They work way good, boys. This team is awesome for that, though. I mean, they've got healing. And so the, here's the nice thing with this team. You got damage, damage, healing healing cleansing defense up defense up and it's just you can just go and like you know for example you know obviously we know these other characters kits so she can remove buffs he can remove buffs um she can revive she can cleanse cleanse like it's it all works out for everybody actually well sure he cannot cleanse i apologize only for wakanda but so she can cleanse herself but overall it's just like this team just they are really really good they work well in raids i have a whole video on them i will uh try to remember to put a card over in the corner over there you know where it go you know where the cards go i'm gonna put a card up there for that and uh, yeah i tell you what uh really good uh, really good team that i really personally enjoy this is my favorite team to put her in and she works so well with them so the very classic uh, tech wing team that we all look at here, so you might be saying, well, where the heck's Invisible Woman? So when you have the tech wing team, what you can do is it's very similar to the team that I showed you before, but so you can either swap Shuri out and toss in Invisible Woman, or you could toss out Scientist Supreme, though a lot of people swear by Scientist Supreme. People are also swearing by Shuri. It, you know, Invisible Woman can fit in this team just as well, and I would almost argue that her barrier is more important. And with Shuri, 
giving the defense up in energy is amazing, but after that, she's kind of dead weight until she gets her heal, and then she gets the, you know, again, the energy and whatever, whatever. I would say that Sue is almost more, or Invisible Woman, is more valuable in place of that because of the barriers, because of the stealth, the cleansing, everything else. Shuri only gives the defense up with a little bit of energy. That is my thought that this variant of Tech Wing, some people are going to disagree, but I personally love this team so guys i would love to know what you think what is your favorite invisible woman team are you going to try any of these i'm sure that most of you guys are familiar with the tech wing team at this point uh let me know what you think let me know what you think and uh that's pretty much all that i have got for you guys today as far as invisible woman goes thank you guys so much for watching this is a this is a video that i've wanted to make for a long time but i wanted to wait till more people had invisible woman so that it like had maximum reach for everyone. So there you go, that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. As always, important links in the description below, uh, Discord, everything else, it's all in there if you wanna ask any questions or talk to me about stuff. Make sure so you don't miss anything, uh, smash that subscribe button, leave a like on the video, that really helps me out. And uh, make sure to say hello to uh, our boy Marty. This is our boy Marty. He's joining us for videos now, so say bye Marty. Bye Marty. <laughs>